Good morning. We are still between two worlds, and last week we had the subjects of reconciliation and fulfillment, in which it was given to us that our individual fulfillment comes about in proportion as we are reconciled as we become one, consciously one, with our source and thereby with each other. Always remembering that as I am one with the source, God, I am one with all spiritual being, whether appearing as person animal vegetable mineral since the one consciousness is the life of all being it is only necessary to attain that conscious realization that I and the father are one and automatically we are one with each other with man, animal, vegetable, mineral world in the same way we prove our oneness with our source in our relationship with each other if a man say that he loves God whom he has not seen but does not love his fellow man he is a liar inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me and the reason is that the only God there is the only Christ there is is that Christ which is incarnate in man that Christ which constitutes the reality of individual man and therefore in our service or devotion to man we are expressing our love to God and acknowledging the oneness of God and man and thereby we are not only praying for ourselves and our friends we are praying for our enemies and thereby making friends of the enemies in what the, ma the master called this world we are entirely a state of limitation it would seem actually as if I am just a figure here all by myself and each one of you is a figure there all by yourself without contact with each other and what is tragic it is, and we have been taught, that we are limited to our own mind so that we are limited to our own education, our own environment, our own experience. And always in going through life 
it is as if I were looking to me for my progress, for my success, for my happiness, for my human relationships. Whereas this is not true at all. It is only true in this world, but it is not true in my kingdom. And the reason is this. Well, the best example of it all, of course, is the illustration of the tree of life. Surely, if you look at each branch separately, they seem to be separate branches. But as you look toward the center, you notice that they are not separate branches. They are all part of one trunk, all united in the trunk of the tree. And then, as your glance goes down into the ground, you will notice that that entire trunk and all of the branches are one with the roots. But if you have even greater vision, you will notice that the roots are one with the earth and the streams of water beneath the earth and the rain that falls from above, and the sun that, fall, that shines from above. And so you will notice that every tiny twig of every branch, and every branch on the trunk, and the entire branches, and the trunk, and the roots, are not only one with the entire universe of the earth, but of the air and the clouds and the skies above. And therefore, the tree does not live by virtue of itself or even by virtue of the food that is drawn into it from the earth. But actually, it is living by the drops of rain from the clouds and the sunshine and the air the moisture, in some cases the snow, the ice, all of this contributes to the life of the tree. And yet we, we actually believe that we are supporting ourselves and that our lives are being maintained and sustained by our own efforts or our own wisdom not realizing that we are a part of each other just as much as every branch is a part of the trunk of the tree. We are a part of each other and by being a part of each other we are likewise a part of the vine, Christ, the Spirit of God and that vine or Christ is one with the Father. And so it is that actually there is in the midst of us always the tree of life. And if we have spiritual vision, we will always be led to look at each other and remember how much a part of each other we are. And then we will look into the invisible and notice that vine, that trunk that extends down into the roots and out into the soil, drawing unto itself all that the Father hath. And then we will understand the Master statement, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then you will know and be enabled to practice over and over and over, day and night. Just think. I am living not merely by my efforts, not merely by my education or experience, not merely by my assets, but just think. Everyone on this earth 
is a contributing agency to the whole and invisible to human sight is the vine that is the spirit of God or Christ one with the Father drawing unto us individually all that the Father is and all that the Father hath and therefore we can relax and rest in the assurance of divine grace because now we know there is a grace operating universally a grace that starts with the source spirit the father cause and flowing as through a, an invisible vine through our individual consciousness maintains sustains the soul the mind and the body And so we are living by a divine grace as we remain a part of this world in this world but trying to be not of it the way in which we prevent ourselves from being of it and suffering its problems and discords and inharmonies is always to bear in mind that we are not living in and of this world nor merely by this world but by grace and the moment we say the word grace we see the tree of life we see the sun shining from the skies the rain and snow falling we see the process of this moisture entering the earth forming food and the food being drawn into the roots into our consciousness and flowing through the mind and the body and on out into our business and professional lives and so now we are living not by bread alone but by every word by the grace of God and now we consciously know the meaning of living by the word and living by the grace of God and we are enabled hour after hour to relax in that assurance until eventually it becomes so rooted and grounded in our consciousness that never again do we have to take conscious thought this is what Paul meant when he referred to the man of earth the man of earth who the master says is a branch that is cut off from the tree and as you can see must eventually wither and die because every moment that it lives it is using up the life that is in it and nothing is being renewed or it brings to mind the story of the prodigal son who separates his, himself from his father's house begins immediately to use up his own substance but you see he uses it up and none of it is being renewed because he has cut himself off from the source and it is only when it is all used up 
that he realizes what has happened and knows that he must be restored to the vine. He must be restored to his father's house. He must be reconciled to his father. Once he is reconciled to his father, he is heir to the entire kingdom, joint heir to the entire kingdom. And so it is with us. The moment we undertake a program of reconciliation, becoming at one reconciled to, at one with our source, then immediately we also are heir, joint heir. It's nice to remember not only heir but joint heir because if I think of myself as an heir of God, I may be inclined to forget all of the other branches on the tree. I may think of myself separate and apart from you. And then again, I have lost my reconciliation. I am no longer reconciled. And so, it is necessary not only to know that I am, in my reconciliation, I am heir of God, but I must likewise know that I am joint heir with you so that I include you in the wealth of God, divine sonship. Thereby I am reconciled with you. And in my reconciliation with God and with you, I am fulfilled. Now I am fulfilled because through this grace of God, all that the Father hath is mine, and I am sharing it with you. We are joint heirs. But you are also joint heirs, so you are sharing it with me. And so it is that God and all of his family are reconciled and are fulfilled from the source. Now, We have passed from man of earth to that man who has his being in Christ. Now, in our state of reconciliation, we are that man who has his being in Christ and is heir and joint heir to all of the heavenly riches and now our ways on earth are prospered not by virtue of ourselves, but by virtue of our oneness with our source and with each other. This man of earth, limited to his own mind, the strength of his own body, lives as you see the world of men living at war with each other, each seeking something that the other has, each wanting or desiring something that someone else has, always proving that the other fellow's grass is always greener. never realizing fulfillment within our own being. But now, as this transition is made, we become aware of something that heretofore we knew nothing about. And that is this, that there is a transcendental mind or consciousness other than our own. Upon which we are drawing. Now, 
instead of being limited, well, let us say that we have lost an object, a ring, a pin, or any other possession, and we begin to rack our brain to remember where we last had it, where we last saw it, what we could possibly have done with it, and it may be and often is that eventually we find it again. But now think of this lost object and instantly remember that you have access to omniscience, the all-knowing, therefore that you are not limited to your memory, to labor, but rather that you can now turn within, relax your conscious thinking, listen, and then be guided instantly to where the lost object is or watch how inevitably it is returned and restored to you. Why? By what process? You have made conscious contact with the infinite intelligence, that which governs and guides this entire universe, that which is the law unto this entire universe, and you have now accepted it as your intelligence, the source to which you turn. And if that object is anywhere within your reach, you will be led to it. And if not, by just patiently waiting, it will in some way be restored to you because you have omniscience operating in and through your experience and you have omnipotence and you have omnipresence. You can't miss. So it is that from a small example of that kind we go right on to our business life or our family life or our professional life and we are aware of a lack of a discord of an inharmony and instead of wondering what can I do about it what shall I do about it or how can I do anything about it let us relax for a moment We have access through our own consciousness to infinity, to the all-knowing, which is at the same time ever-present and the only power. And the moment that I turn within, whether some business problem drove me there or professional or artistic, whether some matter of family life drove me there whatever it is I have access within my own consciousness to that divine grace of which we have been speaking and since it is omniscience I am immediately in touch with the necessary wisdom to bring about the solution since I am in the presence of om omnipresence I do not have to go to holy mountains or temples right here where I am in heaven or in hell or in the valley of the shadow of death here where I am I have access to omnipresence 
And that which is the all-knowing, and thank God, omnipotence, the power itself to make the necessary adjustment, give the necessary wisdom or power or strength to go before me to prepare mansions or make the crooked places straight. I can rely now on a divine grace. This divine grace dissolves the problem, whatever its name or nature, because in the presence of this divine grace, nothing of a discordant nature can survive. It makes no difference whether that which claims to be present is physical illness, mental illness, moral illness, financial illness, an illness of hu human relationships. Whatever it is, be assured of this, that in the presence of God it doesn't exist. In the presence of this divine grace, it is dissolved, it is transmuted. And in place of the snakes on the branches, you begin to witness branches. Instead of venomous snakes, you will find yourself face to face with very friendly snakes. And in proportion as we attain this consciousness, even the lambs and the lions will lie down together. The entire secret lies in the realization that this transcendental consciousness is yours and mine, that we are heirs and joint heirs to it, and that it is closer to us than breathing. God is not a God afar off. God is not a God up in heaven any more than God is a God at hand, ever available, omnipresence. And therefore, the entire secret of the spiritual life is in the realization that God is our very consciousness, closer to us than breathing, and that we have access to it by turning within on the ground, up in the air, beneath the sea, or on it, we have access to infinity, infinite grace, the gift of God. And always remember, the gift of God is himself. The gift of God is not a person or a thing or a condition. The gift of God is always himself, itself, consciousness. God has given us divine consciousness and our access to it proves it to be the bread, the meat, the wine, and the water. Divine grace appears as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night if that should be our need. Divine grace appears as food shared by a poor widow or prepared for us on the very stones in front of us. Divine grace can appear as our nets filled with fish, even though a moment before the seas had appeared to be barren of fish. Divine grace does not give us anything or manufacture anything for us. Divine grace appears as 
And going back to the tree of life, it is divine grace that appears as sunshine, divine grace that appears as rain and snow, divine grace that forms these into food in the ground, divine grace that appears as the sap flowing up in the tree, divine grace appearing finally as the fruitage. It is never divine grace sending something, giving something. It is divine grace forming itself as our daily need. To move in consciousness from the man of earth who is entirely limited to himself mentally and physically and financially to being that man who has his being in Christ means know this truth I and my father are one and it is because of this oneness that I can turn within to the vine, the Christ, the Spirit of God that is in me, the infinite intelligence of the universe, omniscient, omnipresence, omnipotent, and find that this divine grace lives my life. And I live as a beholder to the glory of God on earth. It is the glory of God that appears as my soul and mind and body. It is the glory of God that appears as fruitage, harmony, success, abundance in my life. I of my own self, separate and apart from that divine grace, the word of God, am nothing, nothing more than a branch that is cut off from the tree. But having been consciously reconciled to God and to man, I am now the full and complete tree living by the grace of God with access to all that God is and all that God hath. And then in every moment remembering all of the good that is flowing in me, through me, as me. All of this good is the glory of God manifesting itself. As I abide in him, and let him abide in me. As I abide in the Spirit of God, and let the Spirit of God abide in me. Recognizing always that although invisible, there is this transcendental being closer to me than breathing to which I have forever access. As spiritual wisdom begins to reveal itself to me and reveal these truth to me, it very quickly becomes apparent that whatever is true of me must be true of you and must be true of men, women and children throughout this universe, whether at the moment they are friends or foes. It must be a universal truth. because it is impossible to personalize infinity, eternality. And therefore, it is necessary for me to recognize it is necessary 
that I recognize that this truth which has been revealed to me of my identity, of my access to infinity, omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, that this is a universal truth. And of course this means that I am reconciled to you, to all mankind, and it means that I am praying, because this is a form of prayer, this recognition, this acknowledgement. Acknowledge him in all thy ways, this is prayer. And now in my consciousness I am one with the Father, I am one with the Source, and I am one with the entire human, animal, vegetable, and mineral world. And beyond this, I am at one with the consciousness of every child of God who has ever existed from the beginning of time and will exist unto the end of time. In other words, I am in union now with the divine intelligence of the past, the present, and the future. No spiritual secret is hidden from me, even those secrets that were known to the unknown Krishna of thousands of years ago. No secrets are hidden from me that are known unto the Buddhas and the Christs of 10,000 years from now. For we are united in the infinite divine consciousness which is the consciousness of all mankind, of this planet or any other planets where divine consciousness functions. And that must mean omnipresence. Omnipresence now, omnipresence of what we call past, omnipresence of what we call the future, I am in that omnipresence now. I am now in the consciousness of all who have ever lived, are living now, and ever will live in the divine consciousness. For we are one. And that infinite divine consciousness of God, past, present, and future, is my consciousness at this moment, and because we are united here, it is your consciousness at this moment, and as we draw the world of men and animals and vegetables and minerals into our consciousness, here and now, we are united <coughs> and we have lifted all mankind we have reconciled the consciousness of all mankind into that oneness and so it will not be surprising when we hear this truth repeated by Occidentals and Orientals, by Catholics and Protestants and Jews, and Vedantists and Taoists. It will not be surprising as we hear these truths come through the lips and the writings throughout this world, because we have lifted all men into this same consciousness with us. We are reconciling them to this one source to which we have been reconciled. Do you see in what way we are our brother's keeper? If we leave one brother out of this spiritual family, we are disowning part of God's universe. Do you see why 
regardless of our present state of sin, disease, poverty, enslavement of any nature, that we still have access to infinity through our own consciousness because the transcendental is immediately present with us, And that the realization of this truth immediately begins to set us free. At this point, there is an important truth to be known so that as it comes into your experience, it may not be the means of disturbing you. I have said to you in the past that no truth that is given to us, that is revealed to us within us, is ever for ourselves. It is always that God's grace may flow through us to those who may be led to us for that light. And so there is a passage which says, the vine consumeth not its own grapes. And we are the vine. And as that fruitage flows through us, it is in order that we may share it with all who seek it. And that is why every truth that is realized within our own being as a truth of our being we must immediately share with the entire world in silence and in secrecy not publishing the word until we are called upon to publish it not voicing it until we are called upon to voice it Silently and secretly, whenever a truth is revealed within you, immediately open your consciousness and take in the world and realize that this is the universal truth about all mankind, all of the universe, the past universes, the present universe, and the universe is still to come. This is the truth. Just think of the difference between the man of earth who has his own mind to go to only, his own experience, his own environment, his own education, and that man who has his being in Christ, who has access to the Christ consciousness of all time, the spiritual wisdom of Krishna, Lao Tzu, Buddha, Moses, Elijah, Isaiah, Jesus, John, Paul, and the many who have come since, and think that we have access to that because we are reconciled to the divine consciousness which was their consciousness, which is their consciousness, and we are one with that same consciousness, which is their consciousness, which is our consciousness, and which is the consciousness of those who will be uttering spiritual truth a thousand years from now. The same consciousness that will be expressing itself through them is the consciousness that is expressing itself through us as we turn within and live by grace rather than by might or by power. This is the meaning of living by Christ. Christ liveth my life. Christ, which is the vine or spirit of God, remember is the spirit of God of those of the past, the present, and the future. 
And to live by the grace of God means to live by all of the wisdom that has ever been known, is known, or ever shall be known. What a wonderful thing to be reconciled to God and thereby to the wisdom of the ages. What a wonderful thing to be reconciled to God as omnipresence, knowing the presence of God with me, Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us as presence, as omniscience, all wisdom, and all power. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper in the presence of the understanding of omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence. No weapon that is formed against thee, whether it is a mental weapon or a physical weapon, no weapon can prosper. None of the evils of human belief shall come nigh thy dwelling place if you live, dwell in God, dwell in Christ, have your being in Christ, be that man who has his being in Christ, living by grace. And always when you say that word grace, immediately see the tree of life. See the sunshine and the rain and the snow by which it lives and the food of the earth. And then see that that which brings to pass the sun, the moon, the rain, the snow, the hail, the ice and all that is in the earth and draws them all into each individual tree. This is the grace of God. And the tree just stands there to show forth God's glory. And we walk this earth only for one purpose, to show forth God's glory. We can no more delight in ourselves than the tree can delight in itself because the tree without the sun or the rain and all the rest is nothing. And without the grace of God there would be no sun and rain and all the rest. We of ourselves would be nothing but for the grace of God which provides us with that which represents the sun and the rain and the snow and the food in our lives. And so all that comes to us comes by virtue of the grace of God. Let us carry that away as our theme today, the grace of God. It is by the grace of God that we have the awareness of omnipresence, omnipotence, and omniscience, that we have access to the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of all time and space, the wisdom of the East and the wisdom of the West, Whither shall I flee from thy presence? Thy grace is with me. Thy grace is my manna for today. Now all of these things that we have spoken of in relationship to the tree, let us Speak of this as manna, the sunshine, the rain, the snow, the ice, 
the food on the ground, the power that draws all of these into the tree, the power that transmutes. Let us call all of this manna. And then we have the grace of God providing our manna. And the grace of God feeding us this manna. And the grace of God assimilating this food. And then making it appear as all of the things necessary to our daily experience. God's grace is my manna. And since God's grace is omnipresence, my manna is present always. This grace of God flowing as manna appears as the form necessary to the particular moment, even to the opening of Red Seas if necessary, even feeding us adrift in the ocean or lost in the desert. The realization of God's grace appearing as manna is the truth that must be known in order that this truth may make us free. By God's grace alone we are freed. By God's grace manna reaches us to give us our spiritual, mental, moral, physical, financial freedom. Not a freedom from anything, but a freedom in grace. A freedom of grace. Man shall not live by bread alone. You see that now. The bread is necessary, but the bread is manna, and the manna is produced by spiritual, divine, omnipresent grace. The knowing this truth, the acknowledging this truth, living in this truth, abiding in this word, divine grace gives us the manna which is fulfillment. And thereby we are fulfilled only by the grace of God appearing as manna. But if you forget for a moment that all of this is here where I am now, you will be looking for it in the future and you will lose it. Never believe for a moment that you will receive God's grace tomorrow. Never believe that your student or your patient will receive God's grace after you give this treatment or prayer or meditation. The prayer, the meditation, and the treatment is the realization of God's grace flowing as manna in an omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent way. In other words, your wisdom consists of knowing that those who turn to you are already under God's grace, not that your prayer is going to establish God's grace. Your prayer is the acknowledgement of the omnipresence of God's grace. So that the grace that surrounded your student or patient before the world began now comes into visible manifestation because of your knowing this truth, your prayer, your meditation, your treatment. It was always there. But remember, your human 
race cut itself off. And all you are doing now is acknowledging that it never really was cut off. There only was entertained a sense of separation from the source. No man has ever been separated from the source regardless of his sins, his diseases, or his death. Neither life nor death can separate us from this grace of God. Therefore, all those who to our sense have died are still in the grace of God. All of those who will to our sense die will consciously remain in the grace of God and our knowing this truth establishes us in the realization and experience of it. The lesson of last week and of today forms a complete unit, doesn't it? And it becomes a part, another branch, of this entire series of the Oahu Maui series. Thank you.